uh, it's a great privilege to be with you here today this morning and uh, specific, specifically to bring greetings from our church, Evangelical Lutheran Church in Kenya, a, a sister uh, church of uh, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, with which we have the pulpit and um, altar fellowship together and we work as we do the mission of Christ before our Lord comes back. Uh, with those greetings, I want to also personally uh, take this opportunity to thank you, uh, Pastor Matthew Riga, and the saints at St. John Lutheran Church in Hubbard uh, for supporting uh, many of my uh, ministry the Lord has given me in our church, ELCK. As Matthew says, uh, Pastor says here, I'm involved in, in several uh, activities and directions in our church as the, one of the bishops of the district president in the church, uh, also the seminary president. I'm still uh, the president of our seminary there and also the director of Hope for the Destitute. And all these uh, uh, ministries um, uh, need um, uh, active particip participation and involvement in several things. And uh, actually, because of the support from you here uh, for these ministries, for Hope for the Destitute, for my family and, and for my work in general, uh, God has uh, used you in several ways to spread the gospel in Kenya, in Africa, in several ways. Because as, as the president of the seminary, uh, we teach pastors, not only uh, for Kenyan Lutheran Church, but for many churches in Africa, uh, for Rwanda, for uh, uh, Burundi, for Liberia, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Kenya, um, uh, Sudan. Uh, so with the help you people give us and give me in particular with my family has really helped me to uh, do my work. Uh, and uh, recently you really assisted me uh, to have a vehicle which is helping me to carry on my work wherever the Lord sends me. And thank you so much. I wanted to express this uh, gratitude and thank you, and uh, continue praying together with you. Now, this morning, I wanted to share with you uh, one of the uh, ministries uh, that is under my care, and that is Hope for the Destitute. Uh, as I have told you sometimes back, Hope for the Destitute uh, works to help the orphans orphans whose parents died, many of whom uh, out of HIV and AIDS. And as a pastor there in the Paris, when the, the parents die, these children, if they don't get a proper care, they will run to the streets. And in Kenya, there are several street children. And in the streets, they will uh, scavenge the garbages, they will... Um, Still, they will get into all kinds of crimes. The little ones uh, uh, will be in, in even bigger problems with the others, and especially the girl uh, child is very, very uh, vulnerable. Uh, they will either be employed as maids some places, or they will enter into pros prostitution uh, or early marriages, without proper planned things, and this destroys their lives totally. And uh, as a pastor, uh, several of, of uh, the young parents died, and in my congregation it, would, it was really difficult to see these children running to the streets and becoming uh, street children. So we started Hope for the Destitute to help uh, these children. There were few in my parish. But as the Lord gives me more and more responsibility, the number of orphans also increases 
uh, for me. And hope for the destitute has been expanding uh, uh, now and again. So uh, right now, we have 52 orphans uh, whom we take care of in Kenya. As you can see, this is Kenya in the eastern part of Africa. And here is Kenya. We live in the western part of Kenya, this place. Uh, my bishop's office is in Kisumu. The seminary is down south of Kisumu, about one and a half hours drive uh, to uh, the seminary. Uh, the office of Hope for the Destitute is also just within the headquarters of, uh, of the diocese, just next to my office. Uh, ELCK works all over Kenya, uh, just uh, from north, northwest, north, northeastern, southern, uh, central Kenya, but more concentrated on the western part because uh, the church started right down here in the western part of Kenya. Uh, so uh, this is a... Uh, uh, this is the map of Kenya, and this is where uh, our work takes place. One thing I have to mention uh, is here in the northeastern part of Kenya, there is Somalia. Somalia, uh, as far as I can remember, has never had a steady government. Uh, the Muslim uh, terrorist gangs uh, have really uh, destabilized the government of Somalia, and uh, therefore, right now, there is a, a one uh, movement of the Muslims called the Al Shabaab. When the Al Shabaab does something, the Islam community will condemn the act. But the funny thing is that when they come into, um, for example, recently they came to a university in a place here, and they killed over 172 students, young students, uh, but they were segregating them. If you are a Christian, you are killed. If you are a Muslim, you are not. They will ask you your name, you say your name, and uh, after saying your name, uh, you may want to lie and say a name which is a Muslim, but they will ask you the creed of the, of the Muslim. If you can't recite that creed, uh, they will kill you. And uh, right now they are targeting even these street children uh, whom they know are vul vulnerable to all kinds of abuses. They will take them, uh, they take them to Somalia and they train them. They come back uh, as Al-Shabaab and they do all kinds of damage in the city. So uh, that is something appealing also to the church what is the church doing uh, with this situation? So hope for the destitute. Uh, with the programs we have, we sponsor, we offer sponsorship to our orphans. And I say right now we have 52 orphans, uh, whom uh, 40 of them have various sponsors. To sponsor an orphan, uh, with uh, 35 U.S. dollars per month uh, for a year that will cater for the schooling of this orphan. And uh, we ask individuals, we ask groups uh, to consider uh, sponsoring uh, these orphans. Right now, we are working on adding the number to be 80. We are adding 30 again uh, to be included within or for the destitute. Uh, the second thing we do is uh, we build a Kenyan uh, simple local houses for the widows whose uh, uh, houses fall down. When HIV and AIDS enter into a family, uh, it will prolong the illness. And that means the, the father will be sick for so long they will use a lot of their resources in trying to treat um, the, the ill person. When he dies, the family remains very poor. 
So when we get these, our orphans, some of them, their mothers are still there. And nowadays, the government is, is trying to give them medicine to live with, to help them prolong their lives. But they are very poor, so they cannot afford uh, even building a house. So we help them within the program to hope for the destitute to build um, a small, simple Kenyan local house uh, for $1,000. We are able to do that. Uh, number two is the program of farm project in which we try to grow uh, various crops. We started this because we want to supplement some food for our widows and for the orphans whom we attach to uh, guardians. These orphans, we attach them to guardians. So when we, we give you, as a family, another orphan, uh, it is a real, another burden added to your family, but hopefully the disease will come and support you with food, supplement your income with food. And this makes several uh, families to be happy to incorporate these um, orphans. Uh, so right now, we have a, a farm of 12 acres in which we grow sugarcane. But sometimes we grow maize or corn, and uh, right now we are working on getting a tractor. Uh, we have tried to get a tractor for several years, but unfortunately until today we have not been able to get a tractor that will help us to farm this land and also help to farm the small lands, small farms that the widows have. Uh, these widows, some of them, they have smaller farms, uh, but they are unable because unless they use the hoe, the old way of doing farming is difficult with their health and all these other things. Uh, right now there is a church in Fort Wayne uh, which is uh, trying to work ways to raise some funds to help us get a tractor. Uh, a tractor in Kenya, a new one would be about uh, $40,000. It's not a small money. Uh, this church, uh, up to the Sunday I left, they had collected $6,000, and uh, their target this summer is to collect 15000 so that uh, if we get more, we will be able to get a new tractor, or we could uh, get a used one. Uh, so the, the farm project uh, is very important for supplementing food and generate income within Hope for the Destitute. And uh, the fourth program is Catechetical Seminar. Uh, this is like VBS you do here. Uh, we call our students, these orphans, during uh, school vacations, and for a week uh, we will feed them and we will teach them uh, the word of God. And actually, uh, uh, this, is a, this is more of evangelistic ministry to these young people. And uh, if we look into Hope for the Destitute, this is the reason why Hope for the Destitute exists, because it is a faith-based organization, which actually the aim of Hope for the Destitute is to make these orphans the Christians. Hope for the Desert is there to evangelize them, to make them uh, Christians so that they may grow up as uh, Christ uh, uh, saved people. So during this time, uh, we organize seminars into various localities. And uh, with our orphans together, we bring them uh, in, but also bring other youths in that locality. So about 300 uh, children are brought together, and when they come together, they will, we will teach them the word of God. Through this, we have uh, reached so many... We have, we have reached so many uh, 
uh, families with the gospel. Hope for the Desert has helped to plant several churches for ELCK. And we have even helped to build some churches in, in various localities. So uh, this is uh, one thing that is uh, making Hope for the Desert unique in its services as faith-based organization. And out of this, now we have felt there is a great need to start the school for the orphans, Hope Academy. Hope Academy is coming out of a catechetical seminar. And some of the challenges these orphans get, uh, sometimes it's not very easy with the guardians or with the relatives who live with these uh, orphans. Some, some of them abuse these children and it has forced us to sometimes uh, take serious uh, actions against some of these people. And uh, some of these orphans, when they are abused in such a way, they will run away to another relatives and another place. And since we don't have an orphanage uh, for these grown-up children, some will come and live with, uh, with us, with Ruth. Ruth will take care of them as they go to school. But also in our home, we can't uh, uh, actually have so many of them. So Hope for the Desert has decided to start uh, an academy school uh, that will run from kindergarten to eighth grade. Now this school uh, will be a center for uh, Christian education also. And there will be a provision, because there will be dormitory, uh, where some of these abused and orphans who have difficult situations at home, they could stay there. So my aim or our aim right now with Ruth uh, to visit the United States is to raise uh, uh, $100,000 to build this school to start next year in January. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, will really be very helpful for the work of orphans, for the work of the church, and for the work of hope for the destitute. Actually, that is all about hope for the destitute. Uh, now, as you can see, uh, these are uh, some of our students, some of our children we take care of. Uh, like this girl here, Veronica, the mother and the father died when she was very, very young. And we knew both parents. Uh, they, were, um, they were our neighbors. They were friends. And then uh, we took Veronica just from kindergarten. Uh, last year, Veronica completed high school. Now she's a grown-up uh, girl. And uh, September this year, she will join university. Thank be to God uh, for the life of many of these our children. Um, uh, these are uh, uh, some of the uh, children we have. Uh, as you can see, uh, this boy here uh, is a um, um, mentally challenged child. And she was just at, he was just at home, couldn't talk, uh, couldn't do anything. His life is very complicated. And Hope for the Destitute uh, adopted him, took him to a church uh, school, uh, working uh, with these uh, uh, mentally challenged uh, children. And now the boy can talk. Now the boy can talk. Um, as soon he is starting to read. Uh, this is uh, one of the houses. Uh, this is one of the, the houses we built for these widows. It's a very simple Kenyan house. A very simple Kenyan uh, house. And here this widow would live uh, for about 25 to 30 years. This is mud or dirt. And here is corrugated iron. And this is the door. She gets in, and uh, this, this way could be the bedroom. Uh, this side is the living room. It's a very simple house as such. 
Uh, this is a this is still a house. You see the the woods are 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 put there, and then in between uh, we put the dirt or the mud, and that house becomes that house. Now this widow here, first of all, the house of his son got burned down. Uh, his son is asthmatic and uh, can't do a lot of work, uh, but. Uh, she is one of the widows within our program, and she had one cow, and when she was tying the cow, something happens, and uh, she slipped on the cow dung, and she fell down and broke the hip here. So the, the, thigh, the thigh bone and the hip left uh, each other, and uh, she was there, couldn't walk, couldn't do anything, and with that life at home, it was really difficult. Now, they were trying to do a, something silly, uh, that they were treating uh, uh, this widow, they call it traditional medicine, and it couldn't work. So uh, one morning as we were sleeping, uh, Ruth had somebody knocking uh, the window, our window, and Ruth came out, and found the boy and asked, oh, geez, why are you here this early morning? He said, uh, my mother is dying and we don't know what to do. So Ruth immediately took the vehicle, went to the, the rural area, brought this uh, widow to the hospital. She stayed there to the hospital for three months. I think some of our newsletters we sent uh, had her picture. And she was uh, uh, treated. Oh, for the desert, paid about $2,000 uh, for, for her treatment. And now she's back home, happy with her grandkids. Uh, that is uh, uh, one thing we thank God for. Uh, this is the farm for the sugarcane that we grow, the sugarcane that help to promote uh, the local generating activity for hope for the destitute. And this is the catechetical seminar. When we bring the children in a locality, they play, they eat, and they are taught. Um, in America here, you have plenty of food. So sometimes you don't understand what, uh, is, what hunger is. But in Africa, in some places, uh, people would have uh, one meal a day, or they would get what they have, or they will eat what could be produced. So when we have the catechetical seminar, we prepare food for about 300 people, children, and children come, and they can have three meals a day, and we teach them. So uh, this one is uh, also very important for us and try, uh, show the children the way. Now this church here, this is a church, this one. This church was help its building with the work of Hope for the Destitute. As uh, we, we were studying in, in Fort Wayne, we were staying with Ruth there, we started to raise some funds to build this church. And now the church is, is uh, fully built and is now uh, one of the centers around that rural area. Uh, well, this is uh, still the catechetical seminar, different lessons during the catechetical seminar. These children, there's a choir, this is a church, and there are various lessons going on. Uh, uh, these are uh, some gifts here. There's a church in Ohio who, who sent some Bibles and, and some books to some of our orphans, they sponsor. Uh, so this uh, boy, together with grandma, is, is receiving the books. Uh, uh, this is a home of a widow, and, and these ones. Uh, Hope Academy, Hope Academy, the school, it will be a school more for the orphans and vulnerable children. 
Uh, this will be a kind of a, a catechetical school uh, for orphans and other vulnerable children, constant spiritual caregiver for youth and center for evangelizing youth. And there in the school, we will give free lunch to the uh, 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 student there. Thank you for your prayers and support. And once again, I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, want to thank uh, uh, St. John Lutheran Church uh, in Hubbard. Because so far, uh, we feel that this congregation has adopted us me and Ruth, uh, because uh, uh, you do a lot uh, for our ministry. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, and may God bless you. Thanks.